last was shot in the leg during an Arakara attack. Members of the fur trapping company Hugh Glass joined set out in the spring of 1823 to hunt beaver. They were led by William Ashley. The group consisted of men from 19-year-old Jim Bridger to Glass, who was considered long past middle age at 40. They encountered problems on the first day of their trip after a man drowned in the Missouri River, and three people were accidentally blown up thanks to someone smoking next to explosives. In June, they were traveling the Arakara territory and made a deal with the tribe for some horses as trade for some gunpowder. After one man decided to celebrate by having sex with one of the village women, the tribe slit his throat. The Arakara attacked Ashley and his men in the morning, killing 15 people and forcing them to take a different route. Glass escaped with the group but was wounded by a gunshot to the leg during the fight. Glass's revenge wasn't as extreme as the Revenant depicted. While tracking John Fitzgerald and Jim Bridger, Hugh Glass eventually ended up Fort Henry sometime in 1824. According to one story, he arrived in the dead of winter and appeared to the fort residence as a frozen ghost. Bridger was at the fort and had been allegedly tormented over his decision to go along with Fitzgerald. Instead of murder, Glass gave the young man a strict lecture and told him to behave better in the future. Although Glass had slightly more animosity toward Fitzgerald, but after learning he had since joined the military, it was illegal to kill a solider. He could take no further action against him. It may have turned into an epic over time, but the entire story of Glassie's journey to reclaim his gun ended when a captain at Fort Henry simply gave it back to him. Glass was attacked by groups of Native Americans more than once. Despite some friendly Sioux on his journey to retrieve his gun, Hugh Glass had several run-ins with Native Americans that didn't go so well. According to one story, after he made it to Fort Kiowa, Glass joined up with a few French traders who were immediately attacked by a group of Ree Indians after he decided to go in another direction. The Ree noticed Glass and came after him. He was allegedly saved by a mandate who took him to his village and fed him. He later traveled with several other trappers and met a group of Pawnee with whom they intended to trade. Unfortunately, the Pawnee were actually Rikarees, and they killed two of Glassie's group before the others escaped and separated. Glass was supposedly captured by Pawnee who accepted him but burned his companion to death. After Hugh Glass escaped from the pirate gang he was forced to join, he and a fellow deserter were captured by a tribe of Pawnee as they traveled across the Midwest. Allegedly, Glass was tied up while his companion was stripped naked, bound to a pole, and had slivers of pine wood jammed into his skin which were then set on fire. Realizing he could very well suffer the same fate, Glass decided to honor the chief by bowing and offering him cinnabar, a mineral the Pawnee used to make war paint. The chief was apparently so impressed with Glassie's behavior, he spared his life and made Glass an honorary Pawnee. Living with the tribe for a while, he learned survival skills such as how to use a tomahawk and lance and was thought to have obtained the rifle his enemies later stole. There is no evidence that Glass ever had a Pawnee wife or son, as depicted in The Revenant. Glass screamed at a wolf pack until they abandoned their kill so he could eat it. Stories about how Hugh Glass survived after he was abandoned vary greatly, while accounts of how far he traveled, who he met, and what the weather was like differ. Glass definitely did whatever he could in order to live. He ate what he could get and killed whatever he needed to. 
According to one story, he encountered a pack of wolves feasting on a buffalo calf and decided to steal it after waiting until they were full. Glass forced himself to stand and yelled at the wolves until they left. He ate from the carcass for several days until it spoiled. It said these meals greatly improved his recovery, and he was able to travel 10 miles a day. Despite horrific injuries, Glass survived his bear attack. Despite horrific injuries, Glass survived his bear attack. Glass was horrifically mauled by a bear, sustaining injuries that seemed almost impossible to survive. It's possible Glass was a ruthless pirate working under Jean Lafitte in his earlier years. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care! Bye!